Welcome everyone to tonight's tournament. We've got the UMG Online 44 Search and Destroy for December 5th. Of course, it's myself, Landon Lando Sanders, live here from the UMG studio, hopping on board with our first matchup of the night. It's round one, I believe, between Excalibur and SKRD. Uh, keeping in mind, these are best of threes. So we'll be facing off here for London Docks of map number one. For map number two, we'll be heading to St. Marie du Mans. And for map number three, it will be USS Texas, of course, if it does come down to it. So, of course, like I said, this search and destroy only. And the uh, main objective is obviously get that bomb down, which is exactly what we're going to see Paradox do here in round number one. Working that one off toward that B site and having some teammate control. No one yet to drop in this round. Just as I say, that reviction for the side of SRKD or SKRD, excuse me, is able to find that coming on a little bit of a flank as it will be evened out. Paranox able to drop one. Tish as well. Rocking the PPSH. Up close personal fight though, but Brian Saint is able to win it, but now it's a one versus one legal. Taking on Saint, and Saint actually might be going for the sneak defuse. Will this work out for him is the question. And no, legal's not going to be here for the challenge. You wouldn't think yes, just perfect timing for Saint as round number one will be closed down in a sneak defuse. Very smart play coming in from SKRD and Saint, the man to do it. Props. As that will be round number one in the books, like you just said. Of course, finding along with that two kills, Saint's going to be feeling pretty good. After that, of course, rocking the prenate off the start. Tish should be able to find the first blood if things do work out correctly for him. And uh, we've obviously been able to hop on board throughout UMG tournaments so far in World War II. We've actually been able to watch both of these teams uh, much differently, actually, throughout different li life cycles of the game. As Tish nearly takes out Saint here for the first blood, equaling him out and does not find the kill and will get dropped for that great cover fire there. Coming in from Reviction, the call-up most likely from Saint led to that, that particular fight happening and props to Saint for staying alive because that could easily be a situation where we see Legal have an extra teammate and the side of uh, Excalibur have a teammate less. So one versus two, Legal able to drop one in a fantastic situation for him as he happens to turn around also picks off the player who had the bomb in his hand. So that obviously makes Krillix walk a little bit, you know what, two steps forward to grab that bomb and now has to play the waiting game because where, where could Legal be? Legal could be at any position and Jay Krillix is obviously very wary of that. But kind of getting back to uh, obviously talking about both of these teams, I believe we were able to watch this SKRD team with a different roster in total. I want to say it wasn't Reviction who was the fourth. I could be wrong with that, but I don't believe that that was the case. And uh, we got to actually watch Excalibur, I believe, the other night, and they played incredibly well uh, in our variant tournament. So looking at seeing how they can do when it comes in as purely search and destroy as legal firing away. Doesn't actually realize that he's currently on the dock side. And does Krillix check this position is the question. And it looks like Jay Krillix is going to follow along with what Legal just did. What of a uh, cat and mouse chase at this. And Jay Krillix really just has to play the time. It's Legal who has to initiate this fight. And these two will get ready to duke it out. Can Legal catch him is the question. I say they're getting ready to duke out. But just, just as that happens, Jay Krillix walks out of the bomb site. And here comes the challenge to Saint. No! Oh, isn't able to find it Legal. Just toward the side. Does not pick off Krillix. And this is just a very interesting fight that we obviously witness here over in the docks. As back and forth they went, Legal immediately went toward the bottom dock side. Then Krillix followed shortly after. Just great overall timing and just ring around the rosy is essentially what we got to witness there. A lot of timing coming into play. And it's a very interesting first two rounds, but two of them that will go the way of SKRD. And this is something that we obviously have to kind of keep in mind. Both these teams, I believe, are competing at CDO Dallas, of course, coming up. And uh, did actually hear a word from production that they, uh, SK, or uh, yes, the SKR team is actually playing with Risky rather than Reviction. So the R's uh, stay the same. The overall team name stays similar, but the player's much different, however. So keeping that in mind. Thank you, production. Appreciate it. Looking on, though, two versus three. Round number three. And right now, if you're in Excalibur's position, you're a little bit frustrated. Two rounds that easily could have gone the opposite way. After a sneak defuse and a one versus one, we'll now see Tish in a one on two position as Deox and Krillix left to face off against. Great reaction time. And especially coming around a corner like that, you're expecting to obviously have an ADS and maybe a player walk into it. But just when you see an immediate player model right around the corner, it's very difficult to re react immediately because you're almost kind of surprised. And for Tish, it seemed like as if that wasn't even the case whatsoever. So with that, the bomb in hand. 
And can he get the first round on the board for his team? Nope, Krillix, nice positioning there inside of that side 10 window. We'll pick him off. And that's three rounds toward the side of SKRD. And granted, like I said, they're coming down to these little situations. A one versus two, not turn into a one versus one. And back-to-back -back rounds, then we end up seeing a sneak defuse for Saint. And in round number one. And right now, Legal and Tish definitely kind of leading the way. Four and two, four and three. Human Jesus and Paradox kind of struggling at the moment. We actually got to watch uh, Human Jesus quite a bit when it came down to the response. Was having a fantastic performance. And really curious to see how this guy can do. And honestly, after that tournament, I went on Twitter and I was like, I cannot wait to see what this guy could do when it comes to the future tournaments. Even the one, uh, of course, Dallas coming up, just because of his respawn game and how talented he was when it came down to rocking the ARs, especially the FG42. So, Search and Destroy, of course, a different game. A lot of these teams preparing when it comes down to Dallas. As I, like I said, I believe both of these teams will uh, be competing in the open bracket, as far as I know. And at least what I've been able to watch on Twitter. Uh, I believe Saint has kind of been going on different rosters, like basically trying to find a team, making sure that the uh, team pass situation is solidified. But uh, at least as far as I know, that is going to be the case, that both these teams will be there. I know Excalibur will be there 100% as Tish will fire away with a nice nade onto the bomb. Obviously gets the indicator that it's been planted. And now Deox will drop here one versus three. Human Jesus will pick him off in the end as it will be a defuse and a final round here. First round, rather. For the guys on Excalibur, one that you definitely need to find. And, of course, with that diffuse, getting closer toward those streaks. Keeping in mind, uh, for those who haven't been able to uh, watch recent tournaments, the fact that uh, CWO rules have been changed, of course, taking out different maps. Uh, of course, Search and Strong Gibraltar, CTF on St. Marie Dumont. Of course, limiting different attachments like FMJ, etc. Explosive delay. And, uh, of course, also taking out Molotovs as score streaks plays huge when it comes into Search and Destroy, especially... Because that's usually a streak that we see be involved in each and every game at least maybe two or three times. I think it's fair to say. And I say that at least because uh, we're normally going to see players rock those pretty early on. So with that, streaks mean even more as far as the level of rarity that they do occur in. And so Tish normally would be having a Molotov to rock, but getting closer toward that fighter pilot not far away. And this is going to, I think, cause players especially to kind of play their lives a lot more. Realizing that, hey, I, I can get a Molotov here, maybe die probably, but at least I'll have the Molotov kind of in past. And now it's kind of like, hey, let's get this guy to try and play for streaks. Let's get this guy to try to stay in the backside and just try to stay up for as long as possible. And that Tish could get picked off here. Has some teammate support. And Deox will shut down Paradox. But keeping in mind that he does reveal his position. And I believe Saint could get some information as they could form a little bit of a pinch. Of course, a two-on-two. Two. As it looks like it will be Saint coming in here through Cole. Does spot out one and also spots out the second. They walk right in front of him. And that's the worst timing possible. And I speak about streaks. Granite Tish ends up falling short of his. And now Saint's making his way to potentially a fighter pilot or a glide bomb. And that's a big two-piece that we end up seeing coming in from Saint because, of course, if he finds one, most likely will drop for a second in any you know, particular situation. So with the bomb being down, that leaves his teammate in a pretty awkward spot. How does that one go? Well, we obviously don't have to see. And Saint gets blessed. Quite literally. That's kind of funny that the uh, team name works out. Either way, though. <laughs> Starting back here, round number six. FG42 treated him pretty well in the last round. He's pre-firing Human Jesus. It looks like uh, toward that A site is what we're seeing the side of SKRD be favoring. As Eviction should be able to get this bomb down. And kind of surprised, I think it's fair to say, that Legal would most likely be in the front side. But it actually has two nearly. Picks off one. But it will be Deox who's, who is there for the trade. And if you are in the position of SKRD, you're most likely expecting to have a player kind of meet you immediately. You're most likely expecting that... PBSH battle had happened right in front of you as nearly two found for eviction only one will be found but kind of odd that we end up seeing legal on the flank and now we'll see what Saint can do bomb down human Jesus holding that head glitch and will hold it strong enough to where that will be another round in the books toward the side of Excalibur human Jesus finding one in the round paradox I believe along with two found in this one will also be able to grab the diffuse so I don't believe Saint earned streaks now it's paradox's turn See how close he can get to potentially that fighter pilot or that glide bomb. Maybe even the uh, artillery strike or mortars, anything like that. I think we ended up saying, I believe it was methods, uh, actually, from um, 
the uh, was next threat team actually ended up using what was it the um, I forget what streak it was actually. I want to say it was the flamethrower. Yeah, that's that play. Thank you, thank you, production. I appreciate. It. I couldn't actually remember the exact streak name, but uh, we've been able to see a few interesting uh, kind of classes come out. Of course, most likely not going to see it when it comes into search and destroy. However, it is possible. And Paradox was about to toss out his nade and realized that hey, Deox is right in front of me, and that nade could get banked off. No, just plays the timing well. And has to know where Deox is. Paradox playing very aggressive despite having a few of his teammates drop. Tish, thankfully, is able to pick off one toward the side. And Tish is going to have to find an ace in this round if he wants to win it. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. Awkward spot. Awkward challenging. And props to, uh, to Deox for staying alive in this position for as long as he did. Paradox just couldn't finish him off. I believe both of them had a lethal or, ta or, a lethal or tactical out at different times. But in the end, it's a win for the side of SKRD as far as rounds are considered. As they're now up five rounds to two with Deox. Like I said, speaking of the man himself, eight and five so far in this game. And could be making his way underground, it looks like. Toward the start off of this A push. Being on offense now, is, it looks like Human Jesus pulling out the sniper rifle. And this is not really a position. And I say that he goes underground, kind of highlighted for a reason. Because you're not normally going to see as him and Paradox could face off again in back-to-back -back rounds. That's not only a position that you're going to see anyone kind of engage from. Going underground and kind of checking here inside a clock tower. Kind of a uh, interesting challenge, but definitely catching players off guard as Paradox in the back lines is going to have two engaging on him at any moment. But where could he be? As the bomb does get planted, he'll get spotted out there from Saint. As a two versus three, having to defend the bomb site. And the sniper shot missed from Human Jesus, thankfully. He'll get a second chance. You're not going to have that one happen very often. Spots Krillix just to do the side peek and is not going to have any idea that Saint is here. It's illegal now. One versus two. Does not have Mountain on, so his position could definitely be heard. And yes, it will be Saint who yet again will find two. The last two. Is overall, it seemed like a lot of these positions and a lot of the kills that we see coming in from the, from the guys on SKRD are just positions that weren't expected. Like we said, we talked about Deox kind of coming from a different point of view, going underground, kind of being in that side corner of the round before on defense. Saint kind of being in that back clock tower building, just kind of holding on, playing incredibly passive, letting the enemies walk in front of him. I mean, that was just kind of the overall story for, I think, a lot throughout this map, was just the unexpectedness. The Excalibur might have been playing a little bit too aggressively, uh, you know, at different times. I know we saw a little bit of interesting strategies come out, like legal flanking when it came down uh, to being over on um, dock side and whatnot. Like, a little bit of interesting play, I think, we got to see from the boys on Excalibur. But overall, it was just the sneakiness and the overall kind of smart play that we see from the guys on SKRD. Of course, like I said, Saint, I believe, finishes off 8-6, and six, along with Deox finishing 9-6. and six. And uh, from the opposite side, Legal had a fantastic game, uh, keeping that in mind. Eight and seven, along with uh, Tish, who ends up off seven and seven, and Human Jesus, who finishes six and six. So based off that scoreline, only two rounds won. That just goes to show how many 1v1s that were happening through a lot of these rounds, a lot of the clutching that definitely was on the side of SKRD. Welcome back, everyone. Of course, it's map number two in our current match here for the 4v4 Search and Destroy dis on December 5th, excuse me, between Excalibur and SKRD. We're looking here at the B-Bomb site, which is going to be a prime target throughout a lot of this search and destroy. We're going to be expecting quite a few of these offensive hits onto this exact site. As it currently is a one map advantage toward the set of SKRD. They won at London Dock six rounds to two. So pretty dominant fashion. And Legal and Paradox trying to change the tide of how this map two can go. And nearly catching one off guard is Paradox. Actually has some teammate control, and unfortunately, he has to sacrifice his teammate legal and able to make that one happen. And now Deox, the last up. Similar situation to what we saw in our map one, round one game. As it looks like Paradox will catch him off guard. Yes, right time, right place. And honestly, he had a uh, third of a chance if you are in Deox's position to kind of check the right check the right way. And due to Deox kind of holding that backside head glitch on that bomb. He's kind of assuming that he's either be coming toward his left or through middle, and it just happens to be that Paradox wraps back around. So not sure if that's overall just intuition from Paradox as he does escape with two in that round, or if it's just the fact that Deox realizes that, hey, if I force myself out of this position, he could easily be coming through that restaurant uh, kind of window and could pick me off. So not sure exactly what it kind of came down to that round, what Deox's overall mindset was. 
uh, but unfortunately just does not check the correct angle and uh, does get picked off toward the side. So next run underway, and it will be uh, pretty unorthodox strats coming in here from Excalibur, making their way toward that opposite site, especially for round number one. Got to be fairly unexpected, and uh, keeping that in mind, they most likely go to this site because they realize that he is going to have a little bit of an easier time to get that plant down, kind of unexpected how the round outcome is considered will be much different as Legal picks off one on the flank. Paranox, very close to streaks and definitely could pick off one here on Curlix. Has to have some teammate support and playing very passively is currently this man, Paradox. But up close, a personal fight, Human Jesus will pick off one. Tish falls, but regardless, the round, the off hit will work out. And so Human Jesus, of course, wrecking the uh, nice little emblem there. Does pick off Deox in the end as the offside hit will work out successfully. And that's kind of an interesting play that we end up seeing being made. Because now for future rounds on offense, Excalibur is going to have a big kind of overall swing to the defensive side. So, like I said, when it comes to their offensive rounds, SKRD now on the on the defense in that case, now is always wary that, hey, their A sites, their you know ability to kind of hit things on an off chance are very possible. So now they're going to have to always be wary. Maybe we, should, maybe we should send at least one player, maybe even two players toward A. Maybe we should kind of you know play a little bit more passively, kind of work defensive plays, kind of maybe even rush certain sites. That's going to overall, in the scheme of things, potentially work out a lot better for SKRD, or excuse me, for Excalibur, I apologize. So now looking on Bomb Plant easily and quickly down. Yeah, that's what we're normally going to expect, but just not the defensive end. Making a pretty interesting plays is Excalibur, and his Tish will toss a potential nade, not gonna get anything home, and so thankfully to that being the case, now we can kind of rush things out. And was on, potentially track for finding one, but Deox now will get picked off, Paradox Able to kind of limit all their positions, and Saint playing a very passive angle here in the back. Does have the card 98k. And with him playing the bomb, Legal's going to hop on this one, but does pick off one there. Is Saint realizes that player's right in front of him. Can he find this one as well? One versus two. Despite it, it doesn't matter. The round count will end up to three or two to one. Now, excuse me, I apologize. Saint able to stay alive. That's a huge play there from him. Because, of course, picks off Legal, the most important person on the bomb, and Kind of that very passive play, yet again, working out toward the side of SKRD. Very surprising. Very surprising plays to see. And uh, Paradox actually does, in fact, earn some streaks. He's got the Glide Bomb. He also has that Fighter Pilot. And like I said, it worked for them last time. In this exact situation, on offense, of course. Will it work out for them here? Bomb down. And Human Jesus does get picked off here. One going to be on the flanks is Jay Curlix making his way here through Farmhouse inside a winery lot. He needs to get this pick here. That's huge, but only gets the shots in the side. And Tish is here waiting. And now Saint's left all by himself. Trying to challenge one on a head glitch. Not going to work out anytime soon. And with not a whole lot of ammo, most likely will get picked off. <laughs> gets a number of different hit markers, but... Will not finish the kill off in the end, but regardless, like we said, we see back-to-back -back offensive rounds for the set of Excalibur, making their way toward the offside here on A, and it's worked out successfully. And like I said, that's going to come down for future rounds because in the you know, offensive mind of Excalibur, they're thinking, hey, we obviously in our first offensive round, let's hit the offside, let's kind of get the other side a little bit wary, kind of get them a little bit more kind of zoned out when it comes into our overall strategies. Well, next time around when they are on offense, they do the exact same thing, most likely keeping in mind that, hey, there's no way that they think we're going to challenge the side again. And yet again, it works out. So I'm very curious, once this round does end itself out, what are we going to see come in from the boys on Excalibur? As I believe we saw some green smoke there. Uh, that is the gas grenade, potentially. I've seen quite a few teams kind of secretly being used, or using those when it comes in a hard point. As, uh, we definitely could see some interesting strats when it comes down to Dallas. Very... Curious to see how those will go as Tish somehow is able to stay alive for the time. An up close and personal fight. I believe Paradox is not able to win it. As it will be the boys on SKRD who escapes with this. And Saint, yet again here, finding the final two. Did it a few times actually. Over on London Docks for map one and continuing on here on St. Marie Dumont. As now they're only around down. And like I said, I was very curious to see what's the play call now, switching things back over here to Excalibur. What do they do here? 
on offense. Are they going to make their way yet again toward the offside here on A? And it looks like that is going to be the case. If it's still working, why not try it out over and over and over again until the other team does anything about it? But playing a lot more passively, I love this round. I love how this is working out because Legal also finds the first blood. Deox is most likely calling out to his teammates, but he doesn't have a for sure call out. He's like, right, I saw at least one. So this is either a bait or they're actually going to go toward the site. But due to them playing passively and already losing a man, this is just not spelling out well for SKRD. And honestly, as long as the boys from Excalibur play their, this out well, as we actually see a fighter pilot be brought in. Not sure who that was from, actually. But uh, either the opposite team, potentially, is Jake Curlix picks off the man planting the bomb. This should be a round of the books for Excalibur. Looking forward, Eviction actually ends up picking off one at the same time. Jake Krillix finds one as well. Tish, one versus two, and he'll get dropped there from Jake Krillix as well. Eight and five for Jake Krillix, seven and five for Saint. As unfortunately, if you're Excalibur, the offside hit this time will not work out. Three, not a charm. Not going to work out this time. Pretty surprising play. And that was a run that they should have won. I believe they used streaks. I think someone used a fighter pilot. Was that from the uh, opposite end? Was that? It very well could have been on the opposite end. But I thought that was a uh, a fighter pilot for Excalibur. But anyway, looking on, that was a run that should have gone their way. They easily get the bomb plant down. And I'm not sure where Paradox ended up getting picked off from. I was able to drop, but... Regardless, that was one that should have gone their way. And so now with that, in the driver's seat is Excalibur. And uh, here comes some streaks. This could definitely do some damage. We'll see if they can kind of weather the storm. They will. So along with them having to back up, they also do give a little bit of that map positioning away when it comes down to this site. But Reviction quick to hop on this. Player number six and player seven, actually. Not in the action. But here comes Paradox trying to get in it. Does pick off one on Reviction, spawning a few other players. And so we'll gain some info regarding that. Two different streaks rocked here for Excalibur. They need half, rather, to win this round, or it's a lot of utility lost and not any gain. And right now, they only have a one-man advantage, but have to try and pick off these last two in the back lines. I know where the other one is. Deox just has to stay up, but how long can he stay up for? And he will get picked. As uh, basically what he was trying to do, firing through that building there, what you witness is basically there is a little bit of a, that kind of that window actually through the uh, wood that's kind of put up on it. You can actually shoot through it and immediately have a spot onto a uh, onto the bomb. So most likely planning for a spot like that just tries to maybe pick off someone on the bomb that could have been there. Maybe a last second heave, but uh, rather does not take place. So with that, round number eight on board. The guys from Excalibur up around. Pre-nades coming in. Nothing working out. And this is the first time that we actually see the guys from SKRD making their offensive push here toward the B site. Saint pre-firing through. No picks found as of yet. But you see in the early parts of this round as Legal does pick up one on Reviction. I believe Legal was actually holding a uh, side angle there. Yeah. And what you see at the beginning of this round is you see a lot of kind of overall attention as Legal's holding this site down. A lot of attention from the opposite end toward that A site. This is what I was talking about. Ever since the first round, that's always going to be a position to know where SKRD always has to be wary of those offensive hits. Where are they going to be at? Could they be on the opposite end? Could they be working an opposite angle pick? Could they be trying something out new? And it looks like a Saint is not able to walk away with that round. Excellently played from Excalibur. As it will be Tish here. In the final kill cam, picking off Saint. A few leg shots is all he needed. And uh, also got to highlight Legal. Was doing a fantastic job at kind of limiting that entry point. I believe there was two players who tried to enter in at the same time. Literally gets them both one shot where they have to back up and obviously limits their overall time. And so now focusing our attention toward SKRD. Reviction currently sitting at 1 and 7. Saint and Jay Curlix playing well. 9 and 7 for Saint. 8 and 7 for Curlix. Now an offensive push, and it looks like those gas grenades are out yet again. And that's a very smart play. Of course, kind of acts as a permanent stun. As it looks like a legal could be picking up one on the flank, as one has already been dropped. And usually it's Saint who kind of hangs in the back line. 
And so no one currently watching the backside. As Human Jesus could get some good timing on someone in the window. Yes, Jake Kerlux, what are you doing, pal? Granted, it wasn't an odd angle for a Human Jesus to hold, but obviously realizes that the call comes from legal. Hey, they're most likely in top restaurant. Well, let me go and check and see if I can catch him through the window. It just so happens that Tish is literally, his entire body is, is kind of hanging out there. Or excuse me, that it was uh, Jake Kerlux's body was kind of hanging out the window. So, one versus three, Reviction, last alive. Spawning one on Human Jesus, two more. To try and keep his team up when it comes down to the search and destroy. Of course, one more round needed for the boys on Excalibur to force a map three on USS Texas. But can it happen? Can Reviction try and silence them for a round more? Picking off potentially legal from a long range. They're going to go and immediately go for the challenge. Will they pick him off as the thing? And yes, can't round the corner fast enough. That barrel just happens to be in the way as it will be Paradox escaping with the diffuse along with, what is that, four plants in this game? Legal with four diffuses? What even is this game, man? Insane stuff. But around in the end, number six. That will go the way. Of Excalibur. So interesting stuff that we end up seeing when it comes down to map number two. A different story from map one, obviously. As we see three different players finish off with ten or more kills. Paradox, ten and four. Tish, eleven and six. Of course, from the guys on Excalibur. And now toward the side of SRKD, Brian Saint finishes off ten and eight. Very strong performance from him, like I said. Uh, kind of been playing well throughout the entire series. As in that map, it was really the offside hits in the beginning of the round that I thought really were working out well for Excalibur. Two out of the first three end up going their way, and I believe they end up winning the next offensive round toward the normal site there in Radio Tower. Just definitely kind of catching the enemy off guard. This is something that I've always talked about when it comes to search and destroy, is kind of when it comes down to facing off against a team where you're not really sure what their strategy is going to be, kind of what the you know start of this match is going to happen. Like I'm not sure if either of these teams have scrimmed each other or not, but just whenever you see a team like Excalibur immediately kind of force the issue that, hey, we're willing to try different strategies. We're willing to try something out there, something that's not expected, and they do it two times in a row. Then they do it three times in a row. That leaves in the enemy's mind, hey, we always have to be wary of that site. We always have to be wary about the offside hits, about the you know different strategies that could be coming out from the opposite team, which then limits your man count to the normal positions because you're always worried about the off ones or they're always worried about the ones that aren't normally checked. So I think that was definitely a major advantage that we see coming in from Excalibur, which kind of grants them a, quite a few rounds in the beginning, which kind of catches the enemy off guard. And then from there, you've got them all turned around and they don't even know what to check. So oh, it looks like we're having uh, issues here. Apologies. That's how the caster works. Let's go ahead and put the uh, the secret trick to the work, but we're good. We're good to go. Of course, hopping in here toward map number three on USS Texas between Excalibur and SKRD. Of course, it's the 4v4 search and destroy for December 5th. We apologize for the issues. We're hopping in here toward the game. Loser goes home. Winner advances. And Saint and Reviction are pulling out the cars. I'm excited. Double cars here for them. I believe legal on the opposite side for Excalibur also had the sniper rifle out, so... Does end up dropping Human Jesus. Vin's going to pull up the FG42 into this round. So three cars for round one. And a current man advantage toward the boys on SKRD. So looking on. Bomb is planted. And they actually plant it for their side. And Human Jesus being aware of probably that being the case. Does pick off one. That's a huge find there on Decrylix. And so has Tish to do the SMG work up close. And he's going to have to rely on him some damage done, but Krillix is acting as a bait. And Human Jesus nearly picks off one on Reviction. Reviction's mouth is probably watering. He was saying, oh, I could find a, find, a, find a kill with a sniper rifle, but no. Doesn't end up working in Tish. Going for the sneak. Diffuse will pick off one on Saint, most likely. Yes, found, but Reviction is still up. He's still alive. And he just has to finish off this kill with the sniper. Can he find it? Yes, does so. And that's going to be the round victory. Maybe finding one on Human Jesus as well. The one versus two is a very interesting round. One that nearly would have not gone the way of Excalibur. Had the two versus two pick not lined up. But this overall smart play when it came down to them as uh, Reviction kind of able to hang up toward the back lines. Nearly was picked off in that two versus two engagement. Tish and Human Jesus did their best but just couldn't will their way toward a round victory, but still looking on here. Round number two, and we could be seeing the bomb work toward A now in uh, Saint. Continuing on with that sniper rifle on the back lines. Could find a pick on the Human Jesus. 
he were to pop up his head, just not the right timing there for Saint. As misses a shot, Paradox immediately hops on the bomb, and he actually thinks that Paradox could be found, but no, Paradox has escaped. He's no longer inside of that area. And I'm not sure if now Saint realizes that they're no longer on this site, and him throwing that grenade, Paradox immediately hops out, and he's already on this B site. They're going to have no idea that this bomb's going down unless Jay Krillick can gain this information. A beautifully played round there for Paradox. But however, we'll be dropped from behind. Nearly two found for Jay Krillix. But Saint has got to be stumped, man. As he'll rotate over to the correct site now on B. Nearly finds one on a human Jesus. Just if he were to pop up back up his head, he could find it. But now waking his way forward as Krillix continues to do the work. Pulls out the pistol. Which machine pistol is better? It will be Saints this time around. And now Legal. Last up finds one. The jump from Deox will end up to a headshot found for Legal. But not a round victory. As it will be back-to-back -back ones found from SKRD. But still, that was such a very interesting round as far as Excalibur's position on offense is considered. Because as soon as Saint throws that grenade, he's thinking, okay, they've still got to be over here. Most likely Paradox is able to escape that nade. However, in the middle of that kind of explosion kind of going away, the smoke kind of dissipating, they've already moved. They've already gone away. And so despite the, uh, I will not say fantastic strategy, but one that definitely kind of works out for them, it does go the opposite end. It goes to SKRD anyway. So Jay Krillix, of course, stand on board with him. The Diamond FG42 looking very nice, I believe. Does have Deox on the opposite end. It's Human Jesus exchanging a sniper rifle shot of his own. And Paradox and Human Jesus doing some work so far in this round. Krillix wondering what just happened to all of my teammates. Human Jesus, what are you doing, my friend? It's Krillix now one versus three. And also we'll find Paradox... On the flank. Can he find the kill? Yes, it will work out, but there's just too many players, too many guys alive. Because he can't stay up for much longer. And Tish will be there for the pickup. So nice work coming in from Excalibur. Of course, like I said, <laughs> if it takes that to win a round, it takes that to win a round. But still, three men alive. You expect them to walk away with it, and they do, but just by the narrowest of margins. Thankfully... Mantish was there, but looking on here, interesting to kind of point out some of the classes that we actually have. Paradox rocking Mountain along with Hunker. Human Jesus also rocking Hunker. Tish rocking the Primed on the FG42. And Legal rocking Hunker, of course, with that, that Torpedo Variant Sniper Rifle. Wish I had that. That looks pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. That looks pretty dope. And that's why. That's why he has that, because he can do snipes like that. I, I will never do that. But <laughs> nice pick on Eviction, who most likely had the Sniper Rifle out in this round. And now Saint... Trying to go for a uh, nice little angle on that box. There you go. Now you can mantle it. Now many people know you can actually hop this high on the boxes, but you can't. And still looking on. Might have spotted Paradox's head. And due to him kind of checking both angles, you'd like to expect it. Yes, he down knows that he is in the situation. And he's trying to find the headshot. Can he get it? Oh, just a missed snipe and immediately goes for the frag. Paradox doing some work. And no players will fall from the side of Excalibur. As legal, continue with that torpedo in the back lines. As soon as Saint peeks his head to toss out the nade, legal is there to watch over his teammate Paradox. As early rounds that went to the side of SKRD are now being responded back from Excalibur. So, interesting stuff that we're being that are being witnessed right now. In map number three, and I think this is just overall a fantastic series to watch because, of course, map number one we saw the strong start. From the guys on SKRD, constantly winning rounds. And Excalibur was able to win a few, but just overall didn't go their way. And then we kind of saw the overall savviness of the strats come out from Excalibur map number two. And we're still seeing both of those happen, but kind of mixed and kind of combined here for map three. As the series definitely gets more interesting as the rounds start to go by. Curlix somehow able to get that bomb down, despite both Reviction and Saint finding picks early. And now Legal... Did work with the sniper rifle in the last round, continuing to do some damage in this one, but his position is known. And Jay Krillix realizes that as long as he just stays up near that B site, there's no way that the round will not go theirs. And it looks like Legal will be playing the time. And does he jump off the boat? Can he jump off the boat? 
Yeah, it looks like maybe he's trying to go for like a last second peek. Not exactly sure what the uh, call was. Maybe he tries to stay alive for streaks, of course, but still. Not sure if he was obviously trying to jump off the map just in case that the uh, bomb doesn't explode. Can you even jump off the map on USS Texas? I'm not even sure. Maybe we should ask Clayster. I, I don't even know, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's, of course, a little joke. I'm just, just messing around. But no, I'm not sure what the call was from Legal. It looked like he was maybe attempting to, and I'm not sure if it was his teammate saying, like, hey, either don't jump off the boat, don't jump off... Or uh, or what really was the main call there? But still, regardless, he stays up. Streaks are still potentially a thing that he could be going for. And uh, Saint quickly making his way toward the A side. And immediately backs up. And maybe just trying to provide some pressure. As it'll be Krillix who drops. The snipe yet again coming in from Legal. He's 6-3 and three on a four spree. And nearly stays alive versus Reviction. Also keeping the streaks alive. Tosses out the nade onto Saint. But his teammate, Human Jesus, is there. And now Deox up in a one-on-two. Bomb in the hand of Human Jesus. Like I said, legal on a five spree. Getting closer and closer toward those streaks. But where is Deox? Where could he be lingering? And maybe if he can pick off one on Human Jesus. This is big because, yes, Human Jesus actually goes for the, the plants. But we'll pick him off regardless. And I was saying a lot of players kind of just jump up and down, just kind of spot on that bomb. But Human Jesus gives his position away, but also, while giving his position away, he obviously is able to reveal Deox's position. And you see as Human Jesus picks that one off, the sniper bullet was just literally about a second off from legal. He's winning those streaks so badly. I think he deserves them at this point. I mean, he's been hitting some fantastic snipes so far. And honestly, his, his play right now is huge when it comes down to the future of these next few rounds. Because those streaks on USS Texas especially can be lethal. That can be big, especially if your teammates can kind of grab control inside a middle ship. You kind of push him out. That glide bomb can do some work. That fighter pilot, too. It's now hopping on board with the guys on SKRD. Jake Krillix, bomb in hand. He's been playing very well throughout this entire series up until this point. Now making his way here over toward A, but player number seven. Human Jesus right around the corner. FG42 might have spotted Reviction. I'm not sure if he has that quick of a reaction time to realize who that was or to kind of see that player model. But due to the nade being thrown out, spots the feet. And Jake Curlix, unfortunately, you're a little bit too tall, my friend. Does get picked off. Now two versus four. And now Reviction trying to back up. Deox inside ship. How do they hold on to this one as Human Jesus does pick off yet again another kill. Four members in his way and DX will find two. However, he does not find the most important one of this round. Legal will escape with his life along with a defuse. As this is big because now he's got two streaks and isn't far away from the third. So a round victory along with potentially streaks that could solidify a fifth round or even a sixth round. If you're in the position of Excalibur, and granted, it was a, you know, very nice try, I think it's fair to say, from SKRD. It was a valiant one versus four attempt, but the uh, smart play, the smart positioning from Excalibur, not to put legal in the front lines. In fact, kind of keep him alive for that defuse. He's incredibly smart. And so now, can play a little bit more out there, is legal. Can kind of reveal his position a little bit more. And now, Human Jesus falls in reviction, is looking for more. He's saying, Legal, you're playing great, but I got just as many as kill just as many kills as you, my friend. So now the sniper duels from either deck. Who will find it? Reviction desperately needing it right now. And Paradox hanging inside. Not playing the best so far in this match. And here come the streaks. From Legal, the glide bomb out. Doesn't find anything, but does gain some information. So most likely. Clearing up things to legal or to uh, excuse me to paradox, letting him know that that site is free. But it looks like Tish does find one. Jake Curlix there to respond. So two versus three. Legal desperately needs to do some work with these streaks. And staying alive is big for him. And misses the snipe though. Wanted to say that's a big miss. And Reviction now challenging him. We'll pick him off. Paradox finds one on the same. And now we find ourselves in a one v one scenario. Reviction. Versus Paradox, who will win in Reviction coming up the stairs. Thank you very much. 
as the boys from SKRD are not out of this one just yet, staying alive. And we're now heading into round number nine, even at four to four. And that's a huge find. If you are in Reviction's case, because of course, PPSH versus Machine Pistol, granted, take your pick. But coming up the stairs like that, Paradox was just not fully ADS. He wasn't really looking fully at the ground, and you're not finding some kills in that last run. The one that means the most is the one at the end, and he can't find that. A lot of momentum. Got to be granted toward Reviction, but that quickly is destroyed. As Human Jesus is there for the pick, just when you start to think, well, legal. He's not taking us out with a sniper rifle just, just yet. Human Jesus is there to respond, and I believe that's actually Saint. Having the FG-42 heading into this round, so swapping rolls, not pulling out the sniper rifle any longer. And is just waiting for Human Jesus to make a mistake and not catching the side of his arm. Does not catch that, and I believe Human Jesus does. And so with Saint being on this bomb, that's not the best position to hold right now because he's got two of his teammates have already fallen. So despite a lot of the momentum coming from that last round, thanks to Reviction dropping early, we could see Excalibur regardless get to that fifth round first. And it's looking a lot more likely as kills start to take place. Deox one on four. And Human Jesus misses the snipe, tossing out the frag. Deox trying to do any damage he can to potential streaks earned. And he cannot, as it will be a fifth round found from the boys on Excalibur. Paradox getting some momentum back. As he does find the 1v1 that time, of course, had uh, three other teammates behind him, but still. Definitely improving. I think he had two kills just, what, two rounds ago. It is now up to six, so definitely playing a lot better. But can we see a round 11 forced? Legal still does have that fighter pilot. And Paradox making his way toward the site. Has to be very careful. I was going to say, if he makes his way toward the site, he doesn't have Legal clearly watching over him. And Reviction is still here. And Legal's actually in that fighter pilot. Of course, they're just waiting for him. Reviction quick to hop inside of his base and is ready to go now. And I'm not sure, did Reviction actually go inside of a uh, closed building, or was he just kind of hanging out there? I didn't actually see that or not. Regardless, where is Legal at? Okay, Legal's now here. I was thinking, where's Legal at? But actually takes the shot in the side. And Legal is still up. That's going to be a lot of frustration. If you are on Reviction's side, the one time you get the hit marker has to be then. And so trying to set back up. Bomb still in the hands. Are the boys on Excalibur? No. Bomb is dropped. Paradox falls. And if you're in SKRD's position, you got to know that that's the case. Can we see round 11 be forced? Legal coming around the corner. Picks one up on Saint. That's a big one to find. But unfortunately, Tish drops. And now it's a one versus three. And just like that, we are headed to a round 11. This series coming down to the wire. Map number one was found by SKRD, six rounds to two. Map number two was found six rounds to three by Excalibur. And now we see overtime forced for the final round of play. And Legal doesn't have any streaks to work with. I don't believe anyone on SKRD has anything either. Yes, yeah, so this is going to come down to straight kills. No streaks coming into play. Smokes out early. Nades exchanged from the sign on Excalibur. Human Jesus making his way forward as well with the FG-42. A pick is massive. As we're already seeing snipes be exchanged. I believe that's Reviction and Legal going at it on the opposite end. As it looks like Jake Crooks actually finds one with the Tish. And that's huge because the side of Excalibur is on offense. They've lost a big piece of their setup. And Human Jesus in this situation has to find the headshot on Desate, but oh, only gets hit markers, no kills found. And now 44 seconds left in this round, and if they were trying to play passively, that's not the role they can take anymore because Legal's in the back lines. Deox finds one on the Paradox, and the bomb is dropped. Human Jesus finds one, but Paradox rushing that aggressively. He drops the bomb in such an awkward position. And they've got to know that that bomb is at least either in the hands of Legal or Human Jesus, or they're pretty much... 
out of this one. Up close and personal angle, Human Jesus needs to find the pick, but no, can't find it at the same time. Legal falls, and just like that, round 11 will go the way of SKRD. A very hot, hard-fought battle. As this one sees OT in the final match of play. USS Texas will be our final resting place. And fortunately, the final one for the guys on next caliber. But overall, a very interesting series. We see Reviction finish off 10 and 7. Saint 5 and 8. Definitely two players that you were highlighting a lot, along with Jay Curlick, 7 and 8. And uh, I believe, what is it? I forget who finishes off the most. I believe Human Jesus finishes off 9 and 8 as well, along with Legal finishing off 8 and 6. So a lot throughout that overall matchup obviously took place. I was kind of breaking down things, heading into round 11, of course, talking about Matt number 1, talking about Matt number 2. Essentially, it was just both teams kind of playing dominantly when it came down to their, of course, maybe preferred maps. London Docks, of course, for SKRD, St. Marie Dumont for Excalibur. But Matt number 3 definitely was interesting to watch. We saw, at times, four different players rocking sniper rifles. Uh, of course, for the side on SKRD, it was Reviction and Saint. And, of course, like I said, for the guys on Excalibur, it was Legal and Human Jesus. Legal was able to play for those streaks. That was a massive point kind of toward this game because I believe around round four, round five is when he earns those. Uh, kind of being able to defuse the bomb, having both of those, doesn't find kills. I, I think actually finds only one kill with the fighter pilot and the glide bomb combined. And kind of keeping that in mind, he was playing that a lot. Like there were a lot of moments throughout that game, him staying alive, and I believe like a one versus three that kind of keeps the streaks up. There was a lot of moments that maybe he could have challenged, that maybe rounds would have gone his way if those streaks were kind of better used for and whatnot. But still, a round that doesn't happen, a, a comeback that happens for the side of SKRD, they kind of slowly but surely make their way back. And just overall, a very interesting series to kind of start us off here for tonight's tournament. Sleep us in a distant dream Slowing up the speed of time Don't let me crash down tonight I just wanna feel what I feel, what I feel When it's just you and me I'm falling on my knees, on my knees just to see If I can